Okay, so this is just a quick walkthrough to show what I did to process these images into Tycho. So here are the 336 uh, light frames. And if we want to take a quick look at them in the viewer uh, before we start off, uh, we can see uh, what they look like. So uh, they've not yet been aligned. So there's a little bit of offset from one frame to the next. So anyhow, with that, let's go ahead and calibrate. So I'm going to go uh, action calibrate, provide a dark frame, flat frame, and I'm going to click OK. So it loads up the images and we then perform the calibration on each, uh, save the result. And here we can see the output uh, underscore C, that's the output directory. And now we can align the images. So click OK here, and this is going to use the internal alignment routine. And because this is not a wide field of view when there's no noticeable uh, distortion in the corners, I don't have to use the uh, distortion correction. So it's pretty straightforward, uh, pretty quick to process. So once this is completed and has saved the images, uh, then the next step is to perform uh, plate solving. So calibrated, aligned, and now we perform plate solving. Uh, so I'm just using these settings here, uh, lower and upper bounds on the plate scale, down sample, and I click start. So this sends it out to uh, generate a solution. And as you can see here, a solution has been found. Right, now it's verifying it. So at this point, we've done calibration, alignment, and plate solving. So if we want to, we can go ahead and open up the images uh, into the viewer. And we now have a plate scale that's been determined, field of view, and so forth. So the next step then, I want to verify a star catalog setting. So I'm going to use the APAS catalog. And these images were taken with a V filter. Uh, so I might as well go ahead and match that. This is uh, the V magnitude band I'll, I will be using. And I click OK. And then for photometry, I'm going to go ahead and find uh, comparison stars. So find comp stars. And I set a limit on max ADU. So if the linearity of the CCD drops off after a certain point, we can choose that option. Uh, so if I uncheck that and click refresh, you can see uh, what this looks like here. Now, of course, this is with APAS. Uh, usually the other catalogs have more stars. So in this case, it, it won't have much difference here. Uh, but uh, anyway, what we can go ahead and do is um, uh, select uh, comp stars uh, that we want to work with. So I'm going to choose, uh, in this case, uh, this is actually our target. I just happen to know that. So if I go to location uh, with the right ascension declination, I can type in the coordinates of the target. And these are the, uh, the coordinates of that star there. Uh, so I click OK. So that, that is the uh, host star. And so I, I would not want to choose that as a comp star. Uh, so instead, I'll go to the next one here, uh, add it to active comp stars. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this for uh, five more comp stars. And then once I've done that, I will then generate uh, photometry data. So I, this is my list of active comparison stars. So graph, generate data. And what that's going to do for us is help us determine if any of these comp stars are variable stars, uh, or in other words, if they are a good uh, comp star to be used. So we, we would not want to use a variable star uh, as an example. So go ahead and let that complete here in a, a moment. And as you can see here, this is a nice flat uh, trend line. So there's no, um, no variable stars have been used uh, as comp stars. So that's good. Uh, if we wanted to graph other uh, trends, so, so SNR over time, uh, then we can do that. So this is the signal noise ratio over time. So that's, that's just additional info if you wanted. Uh, you could also graph all the comp stars at once. And of course, in this case, uh, what we're looking at is just a comparison between uh, the comp stars. So again, they all have a very nice flat uh, trend so that there's not going to be much difference there. So 
Uh, in any case, uh, uh, here's another one, raw magnitude over time. But most of the time you just care about the computed magnitude over time. So that should be a nice flat uh, graph. So I'm going to go ahead and work with these comp stars and go back to the host star. So click OK on the coordinates here. And then I'm going to double click on it to center it and then create markers one and two. Uh, this is just basically if you were working with a moving object, uh, then these markers could define the start and stop position. Uh, there's multiple ways to do that um, for moving objects, but in this case, this is a stationary object, so we can just define markers one and two as uh, the same location. So once we've done that, we can then make sure that we have the proper uh, aperture settings. And so uh, th th these are the settings that I chose uh, for the target. Uh, so I selected uh, 8.3 uh, pixels as what I felt would, would be a good uh, enclosure uh, of the host star. Uh, dead zone 7.3 and then a sky annulus uh, of uh, 9 uh, pixels. And so uh, to make sure we're using the same aperture for the target uh, and the comp stars, then we can copy this uh, to the uh, comp star settings. So I click copy and now you can see that the comp stars will be measured using the same aperture settings. Okay, with that we can then go ahead and generate photometry set. And so this will generate all the photometry data for each of the 336 images. So here is a photometry set, again uh, using the APAS catalog uh, with the V mag band uh, and so forth. So at this point we can click plot selected and here is uh, that uh, light curve. So uh, at this point there's, there have not been any additional uh, offset corrections, there have not been any uh, air mass detrending or anything of that sort, uh, but nevertheless we can still see uh, even this quickly uh, that there has been some uh, transit uh, taking place in front of this, the, the star uh, as the uh, uh, light curve shows here. So if we wanted to get uh, some idea uh, as to the um, ingress, egress, and so forth. So uh, we, we could do that here. We could measure out very quickly just a quick, uh, perhaps 2.6, um, uh, 2.7 uh, hours potentially, so from one, one to the next. Uh, again, that's, this is just a starting point. So. Uh, most of the time this has been developed with the thought of measuring rotation periods of asteroids and uh, so forth, but uh, uh, this could certainly be adopted to uh, work with exoplanets. So anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time.